Hello and welcome to Introduction to University Mathematics. Uh, I'm James Monroe and I'm the lecturer for this Oxford course in 2025. Um, we've recorded these videos primarily for Oxford students who are taking this course as part of their first term of their first year on a mathematics course at Oxford, but we've also put them on YouTube uh, for other people to use however you like. Uh, there are three components to my course. Um, I have lecture notes, uh, which contain lots of detail about all of the course material and some discussion and remarks along the way. Um, there are these videos where I've taken the content from the lecture notes and I've removed lots of the discussion and lots of the uh, things that I'm planning to say out loud. Uh, in the videos I'm going to say some of that out loud, but maybe not in the same words uh, and maybe not all of the remarks. Uh, so there's some differences between the notes and the videos. Uh, just because of how I've recorded them, uh, but all of the core content is in both. Uh, and then for Oxford students, there are two in-person lectures at the start of term where I'm going to take ideas from the notes and try to combine things together a bit. Um, those will also be recorded for people to watch if they can't attend the in-person lectures. Uh, so putting all of this together then, uh, the notes are a good source if you want to see uh, properly written up description of everything. Uh, the videos are here to help you understand it uh, and the lectures are here to consolidate, ne ne to consolidate knowledge together. Okay, uh, that's the course. Um, the course itself is introductory, it's at the start of the year uh, because I'm trying to set things up for what's coming up later in a mathematics degree. Um, lots of the things that I say in my course will come up later on uh, and when they come up later on hopefully the lecturer there will define things and explain things and won't assume that you've seen it before but the idea of this course is so that you have seen it before uh, and so that you can get a bit of a head start on some of the notation and definitions that you will meet during a mathematics degree. Um, I want to start by thanking several people. Um, the lecture notes are not my original work uh, and they're heavily based on versions from many other people. I want to thank Richdell, Ian Hewitt, Alan Mulder and Peter Newman who have all done versions of this course before uh, and whose lecture notes I have largely copied um, standing on the shoulders of giants and combining things together. Um, I have added some colourful styling, so my uh, different definitions, theorems and uh, examples are all in different coloured boxes, uh, but I've copied that as well. Um, that's enabled by a LaTeX package by Ulrich Schwartz, and I'm copying the setup used by Evan Chen's napkin project. Big fan of the napkin project. Uh, please send any uh, corrections or queries uh, to uh, me either by email, I've put my email address on screen there, or by leaving a YouTube comment if you're watching the YouTube version of these videos. Uh, okay, um, we have a course synopsis uh, and every maths course at Oxford has a synopsis explaining what you're going to learn. Um, let me walk, walk you through the synopsis for this one. Um, there's a bit at the start with the natural numbers which will get out of the way in this video. Uh, and I want to talk quite a lot about mathematical induction. Uh, we have several different forms of mathematical induction that uh, we should know about. Uh, but then the main bulk of the content is on three things, um, sets, relations, and functions. Um, so I have examples of sets. Um, we have things you can do with sets, uh, including the power set, forming Cartesian product of sets. Uh, and then we'll talk about relations, and I have examples of relations, and a uh, definition of equivalence relation, which is a particular sort of relation, um, and places you might need to use that. Uh, and then when we talk about functions, I have a definition of a function, which uses some of the notation from previous sections, uh, and we'll be quite interested in properties of functions. In particular, we're going to look at injective and surjective functions, and find conditions for a function to be invertible. Um, that's the main content, um, sets, relations and functions, which we're going to go through in a series of videos and in different sections of the lecture notes. As well as the core content, we'll also be looking at things like how to write mathematics and how to prove statements and solve problems. Um, we're going to learn the quantifiers for, for all and there exists, of course. But more importantly than that, we're going to see several different techniques of proof throughout the course. Uh, we'll need to prove things by contradiction or by induction again. Um, and we'll look at different ways to approach problems. Uh, the course has two question sheets, and other math courses at Oxford have question sheets too, where you'll need to have ideas and experiment with things and make conjectures and 
check whether they're right or not. Um, so we'll see some of that throughout the course as well. I've tried to weave that in through all of the sections, but there is a whole section at the end about uh, proofs and refutations where we'll see several more examples of how to prove things. Uh, but most of that uh, to come later because I need to start with the natural numbers and induction. So this is section zero of the course, the natural numbers and induction. Uh, each of my sections is split into subsections. And the first one is section 0, 0.0, the natural numbers. So the natural numbers are the counting numbers. Um, you might have noticed that I like to start at zero. So for me, the natural numbers are the sequence of zero, one, two, three, and so on, by which I mean zero is a natural number and then every natural number has a successor, one, two, three, and so on. So by adding one successively, you get all of the natural numbers. Uh, that's my definition. Uh, I've put it in a, a green box for definitions. Uh, and the point I want to make here is that other people might have other definitions, uh, that you might have met someone whose definition of the natural numbers starts at one, uh, and that's fine. Uh, so long as you know, when you're reading some mathematics, which definition somebody's working with, you can follow the things that they're saying. Uh, but it's important to check what their definitions are because different people might have picked different definitions. Um, sometimes those definitions might be equivalent, uh, but sometimes they might not be. Uh, so beware of differences in definitions. For me, uh, once again, the natural numbers start at zero. Uh, here's some notation. Uh, notation is a bit different from definitions. Definitions tell you what things mean. Notation tells you what uh, symbols mean. But anyway, uh, notation uh, for the natural numbers looks like this. Um, so this is how it appears in mathematical writing. Um, I have to admit, for my handwriting, I don't do anything nearly as fancy as that. I do something more like this with two vertical lines. I think I've also seen people do this with a vertical line over there. The general rule is uh, that if you put uh, a vertical line somewhere in the capital letter, then people will probably know that you mean this kind of fancy blackboard bold symbol for the set. Anyway, there's the set of natural numbers, uh, and in here I have the, the elements separated by commas, I have dot 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 to indicate that they keep going, and I have curly braces to indicate that this is one object. We'll see lots more about sets in the, the section coming up that's all about sets. Um, so that's the set of natural numbers starting at zero. Um, I want to highlight two of the natural numbers, um, zero, which is the additive identity, and one, which is the multiplicative identity, uh, which means that they have these properties, that if you add zero, you get the same number that you were thinking of, and if you multiply by one, you have the, the same number that you were thinking of. Um, these are true for all natural numbers. Uh, and I've introduced some notation here. Uh, this symbol means that n is an element of the natural numbers, which you might read as n in the natural numbers, or you might read this as for all natural numbers n, if you, if you can move your eyes ahead to see what the set is going to be in time to say for all natural numbers n. Um, it's not to be confused with the Greek letter epsilon, uh, it's not one of those, uh, it's a subtly different uh, symbol. Uh, we will see it lots more in the section about sets. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself because uh, this is a property of addition and multiplication, and I haven't defined either of those things yet. I've only got the numbers at the moment. Um, another important property of the naturals is that they have an ordering. Uh, the given natural numbers m and n will write m less than, I suppose, less than or equal to n to mean that there exists a natural number called k such that m plus k is equal to n. Um, and this captures the idea that m is less than or equal to n because k has to be a natural number, uh, no negative numbers in involved here. Um, but I'm including zero, um, so I'm including the case where m is equal to n. Um, this is an example of a relation. There's some relationship between m and n, namely that m is less than or equal to n. Uh, it sort of has a direction to it. m is less than or equal to n, but n might not be less than or equal to m. Uh, there's some relation between these numbers. Uh, we'll see lots more examples of relations in the section that's all about relations. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself because I haven't told you how to add k to a number. If you like, this is a function that takes in the number m 
and returns the number n by adding k to it. Uh, lots more about functions on the, the section about functions that's coming up, uh, but I haven't defined addition yet at all, um, so I should, I should do that before we start talking about properties of addition. My definition of addition is recursive, uh, and I'm going to introduce it in the next subsection, which is about the principle of induction, uh, because it has something in common with induction. Uh, it has the same sort of flavour as mathematical induction. Uh, so we'll look at both of those in the next video. See you there.